when I think about what the Brainerds have done for us, they've really transformed the place. They honestly have. When I hear more about what they've done for other places, uh, the more I recognize that our situation is not unique. Time and time again, they give given themselves. Debbie cares about kids, she's everybody's aunt, loves educators and creating a great education system. That's what she's passionate about. Paul is a conservationist and he cares about the environment. You take the two and push them together and they seem to be giving throughout the island in a really deep way. The Bloedel Reserve is a nonprofit public garden forest preserve, and up until uh, just a few years ago, we had a really limited admissions policy. Debbie Brainerd came on the board in 2003, and it was a place that really moved her. She felt like in order for a place to be supported, people needed to feel like their involvement mattered. And I think that when she walked through, she had a feeling um, like she belonged there, and she wanted to make that feeling more accessible to the broader community. By having events that welcome the broader public, the more people would become uh, invested and feel welcome at the place. Um, so she encouraged us to take on a number of new activities. And we've also started a new program called uh, Family Day. And we welcome in half a dozen or more nonprofit organizations from Bainbridge Islands uh, to come in and share their mission with a broader community, set up an activity table, tell their story more. Um, and it's something that helps us become more a, a fabric of the nonprofit community on the island. Shortly after they were married, Debbie wanted to move to the island to live here. And they got a piece of land that's not far from Islandwood. As they were looking at that piece of land, a huge piece of land right next door came up. And so they decided to go for a hike with no interest in buying it. And on that hike, a huge buck jumped out in front of them on the trail. A few days later, Debbie woke up with a strong vision that kids in the inner city weren't having experiences like that. Paul asked her to go around and talk to people, and they did. They talked to educators all over. They talked to superintendents, to principals, to teachers, and of course to kids to figure out what could be the best program possible. So they went around the country and visited the best environmental education centers they could find, and they took the best of each of them and tried to incorporate it into what is now Islandwood. What I don't know that they could have projected is how many people are now coming to us to see how they can create centers like Islandwood. It's really had ripple effects around the country and world. People come to experience the reserve for a number of reasons and it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. We've started a Strolls for Wellbeing program that is an opportunity for people overcoming loss, uh, grief, physical and mental illness to use uh, the reserve as a place for reflection um, and to improve their willingness to change um, and their willingness to improve their lives and is creating a real difference in the community. Uh, we've already served more than 150 people that uh, really need to have hope and they can find it uh, by immersing themselves in nature. We recently did a study to look at who was coming to Islandwood and we were surprised. We're actually serving more adults who are using the space than kids. Hikes, they're using it for weddings, for retreats, for uh, family reunions and kids arrive there and often it's the first time they're staring up at huge trees or seeing stars at night and they're leaving an urban environment and coming to this very rural treed environment. There are many other organizations on the island that Debbie and Paul have been deeply supportive of. The new art museum they're very involved with and they've made a number of conservation and parks related grants as well. They started Social Venture Partners and that has replicated in dozens of cities around the world helping to encourage young philanthropists and new philanthropists to give money as well. One thing that's always stuck out to me about Debbie is her strong belief that every gift counts. It's not just the huge ones. Last year, she was the honorary chair for our garden party, and during the Raise the Paddle, she literally was up on stage and said thank you to every single donor at every level for the entire event. And she really means it. She really, really does. I think that that's just an example of how she feels that fundraising is a uh, community activity. It's not just a result of major donations. Um, and I think that we're lucky to be a part of a community where they have so much uh, transformative involvement with so many different places. I've asked myself for 10 years why Debbie and Paul give the way they do and I think it's because they want to build community around them, because they want to invest in leaders, and because they want to help inspire others to give and get involved in their community too.